keep this great day of ACC women's hoops rolling from John Paul Jones Arena and the University of Virginia as the Cavaliers host third ranked and unbeaten NC State in the ACC opener for both teams. Jen Hildreth, the Hall of Famer, Debbie Antonelli on the call. Glad to have you with us as we get set to ring in the new year. Hey, Jen, this should be a, an incredible battle on the glass. Both these teams rebound the ball well, but NC State comes in as the number three team in the country, one of eight unbeaten, one of the best stories in the country so far around the women's game, and they have a really good connected group that played up here last year and did not win, so they're motivated to put it together tonight. Yeah, these two teams split the two meetings last season, each winning on their home floor. Good look inside, River Baldwin though. Can't get the basket and look at Virginia move down the floor. That's something you should expect to see all night. And the three goes down for the first point of the game for the Cavs. Yeah, Debbie, what a, a big boost she can provide for this NC State team as you saw their starting five. Isaiah James has been leading the team in scoring, averaging over 16 points per game. Mimi Collins with the turnaround. Starting five for the Cavaliers. Moore Johnson has certainly been one of the big stories. Paris Clark, Alexia Smith stepping into that starting lineup. And London Clarkson in the starting. Them on the inside of Cameron Taylor and London Clarkson. They both are over, combines over six offensive. Madison Hayes at the line, hits him. Cam Taylor, by the way, number 20, leading scorer for the Cavaliers, averaging 14 points per game. How about that drop? Kamar Johnson, it sounds like, was really just given the keys to lead, to assert herself. Well, when you're playing with a bunch of upperclassmen, it takes some time for a freshman to adjust to that role. Well, Mimi Collins, one of the better three-point shooters for NC State this year, has really improved that part of her game, shooting 48% outside the arc. Up and down, as she is known as well, Amaka Agugua Hamilton in her second year with Virginia. Pull up from Saniya Rivers. Will be interesting to see how she is able to impact this game after being out the last three. Johnson, 14 to shoot for the Cavs. NC State Open likes luck. to ice, ice those. The ice on the side, which means they try to keep the ball on the same side of the floor and not allow you to reverse it so they can load their defense to the ball. Good start for Virginia. NC State just one of six to start the game. Rivers in the corner, pulls up, good. Dealing with some injuries, see a brace on her left knee there, number 33 in white. Sets the screen here. No foul called on the play. Rivers to pushing it for NC State. It's behind the back for Brown. Johnson from the elbow. She scored or assisted on seven of Virginia's nine points so far, the freshman. Well, she's definitely not shy. She's taken seven of their 14 field goals. You think Coach Mock's okay with that? I think so, because she scored. And they <laughs> haven't been bad shots. You can tell, you feel NC State trying to work that size of it. Named the Paradise Jam MVP earlier this season. Special that's there, and Wes Moore just said, look, we believe in you. There show how she has done just that so far, really made herself a force to be reckoned with inside. You know, the t her teammates were joking with her about who would have thought they would have gone to the Paradise Jam. And they, they have some players on here that have experienced winning at a high level. And make no mistake, the performance of River and this NC State team at that tournament has helped in their ascension up to number three. Good finish there inside for Mimi Collins, but three wins in the Paradise Jam. And a chance for two more here. Just good hustle from the Wolfpack. Brunel left open. She's the best three-point shooter. I love that action by Coach Mox because you want to put River Baldwin in as much screening action on the perimeter, especially in this matchup with Brunel, who's an excellent pick-and-pop three-point shooter. How about that play for a rebound, and she taps it over to River Baldwin with the assist. Westmore has to be pleased with the locked-in focus his team has early. I mean, they came ready to play today. 
Believe me, when you're in Reynolds Coliseum, those fans appreciate it. You can feel it. It's palpable. Then we have Georgia Tech Pitt, number 22, Florida State, and Clemson. And right now, I'm saying she's the best closer in the ACC that I've seen. She can finish out a game for her team. Rivers in the corner off the mark. But the offensive rebound gives the pack another shot at it. Now Virginia, under 10 seconds to go. Quarter number one. About to wrap up here in Charlottesville. The three-point shot up and out. And the one thing that stands out to me about what she's done at Virginia, she has added speed and athleticism to what they do. And I'm not just talking end line to end line. I'm talking about the acceleration with which they run their offense and the rhythm of their defense. She's done an outstanding job, and I know Virginia is on its climb. But then it also goes beyond that. She's talked a lot about getting what NC State really has right now, that togetherness over the last couple of games in the non-conference. Well, they've, they've got good decision makers with a ball in their hands, and they're young. And when they're learning to play at this rate of pace, now you get into the conference play, things get a little different, right? Because you, if you haven't been exposed, you are going to get exposed in conference play. And so far, their guards have done a really good job this season. Virginia had the perfect non-conference record last year, wound up going 4-14 four and 14 in conference play. Big rebound See? pulled down by Cameron Taylor. Really good defensive change on their ball screen coverage. That time looking to trap was Isaiah James. Isaiah James, excuse me, Isaiah. NC State finds Collins, rattles out. A couple of empty possessions for NC State. And Virginia take advantage. This is a deep Virginia team. Caden Lawson, number 14, out on the floor. Now the shot up and in. Late on the closeout, and that's just a great exit cut. And to force in the defensive end, too, you just saw. She got a fingertip to the ball, couldn't get it away, and now Sam Brunel. Uh, all three of those players, Westmore with football coming up Saturday on ACC Network on them. <laughs> It'd be, it would be nice to see, though. You know, I'll just want, chart it. I want screen assist. That's what I want on the box okay. well, well, That's the first one she's hit all season. Over three previously before that one. Crowd trying to fire up this Virginia team. Johnson on the drive. So I would say NC State's shot selection has fueled the Virginia transition game. That's what's changed. They, they just come ready to play. They're fearless. They, they're ready to go. I thought uh, Kamoy Johnson was going to give you a three on cue there, but it is an offensive rebound. Another chance, but it is... What do you think, Debbie, does NC State want better then on this end to get some better looks? I think they got to play through the paint like that. Get a piece of the paint, get a jump shot, you know. Yeah, expect that is going to come for her. It just hasn't yet, as you've said. Taylor there to pick up the rebound and put it away. Brooks, quick through the lane, but can't get the bucket. Johnson just leaving defenders in her wake. Now the shot goes up. Hayden Lawson can't hit. He told us this team hasn't really faced adversity yet. Now they have a couple of big wins, including one over UConn when Huskies were ranked number two, and one over Colorado when they were ranked number three. Technical foul was called. We will a little catch you up on all of that. <laughs> We understand taunting. We understand that that shouldn't be in the game. But I think most people watching would agree with you, Debbie, that what you just saw and heard would not fall under that category. I mean, and one? She did. She just said it in the direction of the official, yes. But that's what players do. And she's got two fouls now after that technical was called. And Virginia got the two free throws and the basketball. So we're back tied at 23. Big swing here for Virginia. This could be a five-point play for them. Moore Johnson now 10 to shoot. 
Works off the screen, kicks it out for Brunel. What happens in conference play, even at the end of December in your first game, is the game shrinks, meaning half-court possessions are important. Now, you didn't, oh. you didn't say and oh, one. Gosh. She did say and one. Come on now. And they blew now the whistle. I'm, now I'm upset about it. Same official. This is a big time move. She gets fouled. She goes and one. Now, what, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? So that was called a technical foul on Mimi Collins without any chippiness, without any physicality, without any issue, nothing happening in the game except for two teams playing hard. It's an emotional game. It's conference play. Now we'll go down to the other end, and Brunel, who is a perfect two for two, and <laughs> that's, that's Look, a lot Westmore. of people right now, Westmore. Westmore's been coaching for 35 years. I guarantee you he's never seen that before. are three for 14 in the quarter and so they get a big basket they're trying to get their momentum back and it is snatched away just as quickly i'm putting river baldwin in a ball screen action right here and try to get the switch with brunel so that i can get brunel off for a three <laughs> offensive rebound mcgee drive from brooks Johnson in the open floor, takes it with her left, dishes off at the last second, and then they have done a nice job of making shots, 80% of their free throws. Yeah, they've actually been below that average so far from the line today, but have gotten enough elsewhere in NC State. We talked about just really cooled off in the second quarter. Virginia with its first lead since the score was 9-7. to seven. Baldwin going to work on the end. It's too hard to bring a double because she's too deep. Johnson with the pull up. And wide open on the other end. Matt, everybody down the floor. Virginia. Running the offense, Taylor says we're shooter in the ACC. There's that double I'm talking about. I like it by Virginia. It's good strategy. You got to make River Baldwin make a play out of that. Baldwin has eight points in the game. She's two of six from the floor. And then Olivia McGee. I'll tell you what, Coach Mox is dialing up a very good... I think they've been very stagnant with their offense in this first half. I think they need to move the ball better, play off the pass. And Sanaya Rivers is fouled on the drive. Well, Sanaya Rivers. And she does. Virginia. Curling it up from half court. But the Cavaliers with a tried to execute in the half court, but still a long way to go in this one. Let's see how both teams come out in quarter number three. Well, and, and she did all of that, Jen. I thought those things were important and will be important in the second half for Virginia. And that was a quick foul picked up by London Clarkson, her third in the game. So that's something to watch for for Virginia. That's the second time NC State's come off a situational offense trying to get that backdoor look. Isaiah, Isaiah James has got to take a better basket cut angle to be able to score that. Still no points in the game for James, leading scorer for the Wolfpack on the season. There is Taylor, led the Cavs in the first half, and that's going to be called an offensive foul. Junior took it to him with their team speed. And NC State's got to do a better job of shot selection here in the second half. Pulled off sends, just two for ten in the first half. James, looking inside to Collins. Got the back. 
when they get fouled around the rim because that's what players do for Virginia. So a couple of Cavaliers in some early foul trouble. Johnson. There is Taylor on the glass. Already had 10 boards in the first half. Picked up another but couldn't get the points to follow. James. Oh, just shot. Celebrate and ring in the new year. An May all your swishes come true. I love oh, that. Oh, oh, that was good. A lot of damage to her knee, but she's been working hard to get back and obviously is still a big part of this team as much as she can be at the moment. And she's terrific on the glass, so they definitely miss her and they'll need her to be able to compete. Mary McLean averaged 12.2 points, 9.6 rebounds before the injury last year, transfer from UConn. Well, Virginia does a good job of stuffing what I call America's play. Oh, there's a stuff for you right there. The screen comes, you reject the screen, drive baseline. The rescreen makes a great play. One of the best three point shooters in the ACC so far this season. Not showing it so far tonight. And then Here's your leading scorer. You're the number three team on the, in the country. You're playing on the road. It's a tough game, and you got Isaiah James diving on the floor for the ball. Sets a tone, doesn't it? It's what you want. It's what you want to see. Baldwin cleans it up and will. This is lead the game. Yeah, important stretch right here for Virginia. For Virginia, along with McGee, all those players off the bench. Johnson, she needs to find her shot again. Is she just away traveled. from it? Yeah, it looked like it. That was Jillian Brown. Almost all reserves on the floor for Virginia Johnson. The only starter out there at the moment. Lauterbach left open for three, rattles. And Johnson still cannot hit. Rivers the other way. Defend, she has already picked up three fouls in this quarter. And now, UConn at home with their full strength, and then you beat Colorado in the Paradise Jam. The experience before conference play. in his basement at 4 Eastern. Three fouls on Mimi Collins, so something for NC State to be wary of. Lost in one of two from the line. Louisville going on the road to Miami, who had not lost at home, winning. Uh, I mean, there's some, you know, North Carolina holding a competitive game against Latson tonight. Latson back-to-back 30-point games to start with conference yeah. play. Come on now, tonight, Latson. Pretty impressive start. Over the last five. So too is Virginia. River Baldwin's not going to change that as Lauterbach. She's been impressive. Well, six seven, and she obviously is going to give you that size component. Rivers with the shot. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's her seventh made triple, a wide open catch and shoot. She's capable. She's worked on it all summer. And the answer on the open. So Olivia McGee has been an interesting study from a statistics standpoint because she's made 10 threes coming into the game and five in the last three. Lauterbach hit one already. Not this time. Rivers out to James. Baldwin with the rebound. Double-double for River Baldwin in this game. Final seconds of quarter number three, ticking away. Double-digit lead for NC State. Mimi Collins making it a big... Ten seconds now for Virginia. Vaughn launches from three. That's a no. Cavaliers still fighting for the win. And our own Muffet McGraw getting her statue put up outside the Joyce Center. That was a Now Mimi Collins had eight points for NC State, which equaled Virginia's total in the quarter. She's already come out and added two more in quarter number four. Pierce Clark is fouled on her. 
Isaiah James was called for the foul. That is the first miss of women's basketball. Coming your way on Sunday, Virginia Tech hosting this NC State team. That's top 25 matchup to start your day at noon. Then it is Georgia Tech Pitt. 22nd ranked Florida State and Clemson, and we'll cap it off at 6 Eastern with BC and Syracuse. NC State today. Clark will try a three and hit it. But that foul called on Alexia Smith, her second. Off the inbounds, now Mimi. Who averages 17 offensive rebounds, only has seven. Because yesterday when we talked to him, the first thing he told us was his team had to box out. Can, can we say what he called it? You remember the term he used? Called it a butt game. Got to get your butt on somebody and box them out was one of the uses. Cam Taylor able to pick up some points for Virginia. Obviously, she was very limited in that third quarter. But yeah, it's got to be so hard to get yourself comfortable again with a different shooting motion. Taylor's got to be careful there. Rivers. Trying to get back in the flow for NC State. Winds up tapping it away. Alexia Smith, open floor, easy two. NC State with a chance to run. And they steal it right back before Paris Clark could even turn her head. Zoe Brooks was right there to take it. NC State taking a little time here. This is where you want to make sure you stay aggressive while you take some time to just go deeper into your options, into the shot clock. Rivers setting up Collins for a That's a great play call from the bench. Wes Moore set that up. I say it all the time. When he has his offense in front of his bench in the second half, he's like a point guard over there directing Rivers. Well, their seventh assist on that play. And think about the adjustment Zoe Brooks has had to make, too, when she's had to step in and handle the ball more with Rivers being out, now coming off the bench again. I love it. I mean, come on. It's I mean, great. that little son of hers, Eze. We can't wait for the king. new baby. Yes. It'll be a special 2024 for the Hamilton family. No doubt. How special might it be for... NC State, you wonder. This team that has exceeded all expectations so far. They've done it with a lot of balance as Hayes knocks down the triple. I mean, you've got Mimi Collins with a career high today. You've got Sonia Rivers, who nearly has a triple-double. And that is kind of what it's been. River Baldwin, a double-double with the present she's brought in the paint. Florida State coming to Reynolds on January 4th. And then on the 7th, they travel to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. She, had, she was 0 for 3 in the first game and didn't take another 3 until this game. Well, now she might really be feeling it. She is a great leader for this Virginia team. Kamora Johnson, too. This is going to be a fun freshman to watch. This hasn't been her game today, but she has really been impressive. This is a player who had some success, went to the Sweet 16 when she was with Notre Dame, was an ACC All-Freshman team selection her first year there. Yeah, Brunel has had a brilliant career, and she just needs to get healthy, and, and she can definitely help Virginia. Turnover. McGee for three. Well, the final score, we'll see that gap close just a bit, but NC State will remain perfect on the season. They'll finish out 2023.